So one time I accidentally took 30 hits of acid, roughly 30 hits. We don't actually know exactly how much it was. It was liquid form in an eyedropper, but it was a full eyedropper, you know, a squirt thing of it, full. And uh, I used to sell acid in high school, so I know about how much is in, uh, I guess, you know, the syringe or the eyedropper. So I used to put hits on individual tabs like that and on sugar cubes and stuff. So you're going to get 20 to 30 hits out of there. Anyway, story goes is uh, I was working at a place on Mill Avenue in Tempe, Arizona, back when I was like early 20s, and it was coffee. I was working at a coffee shop. It's called Coffee Plantation. I don't think it's there anymore, but it was on Mill Avenue. And these hippies used to always hang out. We called them gutter punks back then. And you know they, they were homeless kids, but they were homeless by choice. They weren't really homeless because of you know whatever. They were young kids, and you know they're just they're hippies, gutter punks, and uh, they always had the best fucking drugs. And anyway, uh, we used to throw out all of our pastries and shit at the end of the night, you know, from the day before, whatever. And, you know, we'd have half a trash bag full of fucking <clears throat> danishes and croissants and shit like that. You know, biscottis and bullshit. And, uh, you know, I, I always felt bad about throwing them in the trash. We're supposed to throw them in the trash to prevent these guys from hanging out. But I like these guys, you know, and it's fucking food we're going to throw away. So I would sneak it out the back door to them. And anyway, they're always fucked up, and I gave them this big bag of, uh pastries and shit, and he's like, hey man, open your mouth, and I was like, what is it, he's like, you want to fry tonight, man, I was like, sure, man, let's go, you know, and he had an eyedropper, right, and I stupidly said, okay, ha, you know, put it in my mouth, and he squirted the whole fucking thing in there, and I was like, oh, and it actually, it wasn't like a drop in the tongue that absorbs, it like hit the back of my throat, and I had to swallow it, that's how much it was, you know, it was probably like, you know, quarter, half a teaspoonful, whatever, it was a fucking lot, and I knew I was in trouble right away. And the hippie guy's like, oh, man, you're going to trip balls, man. I was like, oh, fuck, you're an asshole. Anyway, I knew I was in trouble. So I had to catch the bus home, too. It sucked. And so I ran to the bus stop. Well, not run, but I walked briskly to the bus stop, hoping that I wasn't going to fucking trip balls before I got home. Sure as shit, I started tripping balls before the bus even got there. By the time the bus got there, I could barely see. I mean, you know, and prior to this incident, I had taken probably... <clears throat> Not all at once, of course. Spread out, you know, two, three hits at a time. Probably over 100, 150 hits of acid. So I was no spring chicken to LSD by any means. You know, I was kind of a veteran at that point. But, you know, and I've tripped balls before, but not like this. You know when you see, like, these um, kaleidoscope images and shit and stuff like that? That's kind of like what it was. I mean, I, I was literally blinded. I could not see the... Stuff wasn't melting, but what it was is the colors and the patterns and the geometries of everything just blurred into one. It was intense. It was so intense, it was scary. And that was the first time I've ever been scared on acid because I lost all motor skills. I lost all my coordination. I, I was fucking immobile. And I was on the bus stop, and I couldn't see. I could not see out the windows because everything was just fucking just colors just shining, blasting my face, and everything was just blurring and, like, melting. Not melting, but, like, just, I don't know. You know how it is if you're done acid. Yeah, times that by 30. Yeah, it was intense. But, yeah, so I cut off the bus at the wrong fucking bus stop. <clears throat> and I was only, like, three bus stops away. Uh, so I was probably half a mile or so from my house. I could have walked, but I was so fucked up I couldn't see, and it was at night, which made it even fucking worse. I couldn't see. I couldn't even talk. I was a bumbling idiot for, like, almost three days. I peaked for, like, probably eight to ten hours, and it was so intense, I basically wandered around you know, side streets, looking for my house, talking to myself, and fucking seeing shit and dreaming. It was like a vivid dream, an awakening. Uh, it was like dreaming while you're awake is what it was like. But it was scary because it was so intense. I was sweating profusely. I started puking. It was bad, man. It was fucking intense. But uh, uh, I was high for like three fucking days. Like, after the two and a half days, I started to come down. Oh, but I was a fucking wreck. I, I swore I was going to die. If I could have walked my ass to the hospital, I would have. But I couldn't. I had no fucking idea where I was. And I was in my neighborhood somewhere, aroundabouts. I ended up on the canal bank. Sitting next to the canal bank and watching the water go for, like, hours. Hours. I remember, like, the sun going down and the sun coming back up and shit. Yeah, it was a long time. But, yeah, that's my, that's my LSD experience. And, you know, I've never been right ever since then, man. I, I know I lost at least 10 IQ points that night. And he, emotionally, I was a fairly stable person back then. After that incident, something 
something broke in my mind. I'm just not quite the same. I'm not emotionally. I'm not the same person after that incident. So, uh, I, I'm a big fan of LSD and hallucinogens. I think that the very mind-opening experience and substance um, uh, opens you to parts of your subconscious mind that are normally not accessible. But I would not recommend doing 30 hits. 